So now that we have the sections drawn through our geometry, let's look at turning these into solids. The first thing I want to do is get rid of these plane previews because they're kind of hard to see our actual sections. So I'll select isoline, uh, right click and turn off the preview. And I'll also do the same with the plane at parameters. So we can now look at the output from this series of sections. Uh, we have a number of curves in each list. And we want to turn all of these into one curve in order to create a surface. So let's clear the search bar. And let's search for, let's go with polycurve. And we're going to create a polycurve by joint curves. And I'll plug in our curves into that input. And this will create polycurves. And we have 10, which corresponds to our original slider. So we should be in business here. And let's do the same thing below. Let's plug that into our input. Here we can see we have 40 curves. So let's hit Control G and zoom in a little closer so we can see this better. And we'll make it nice and big and hit Control G again to go back to node space. So we have our poly curves. And now we want to create a surface. Let's go to geometry surface create uh, there are several options for creating a surface we actually want by patch which is a way to create a surface from a closed curve and I'll plug in our poly curve into the surface by patch so now we have our surfaces and we've created our first geometry referencing our original input and we might want to give this a little more volume. Right now it's quite thin. So let's go to Thicken. This is an action we can perform on a surface to give it some thickness. And we want to give a thickness value, so let's pull up a double slider. And let's make this max 1. I'll plug that into thickness. And remember, that's 1 meter. So these could be pretty thick surfaces. Uh, it looks like we have an error here. I'm going to uncheck Run Automatically. And let's just close that node and pull up another one. Plugging our surface into the input and our slider into the input. So we may have had an error before because we gave it a thickness of 0. Let's give it a thickness of 0.5. And let's hit Run. So there we go, we have a straight up extrusion. Over here in Dynamo, you can do extrude both sides. Uh, we're not gonna worry about that with this lesson. But let's leave this, let's put this at 0.8, make it a little bit larger. And I'm gonna check run automatically. And we may wanna add a few more divisions to this. Let's bump it up to 18. So we're getting a little more definition, and it seems like we're missing one section there. It might just be an, an awkward section, so let's just put it at 20 and see if it resolves. So it looks like we lucked out at 20. And the next thing to do is to copy and paste these nodes, and we'll drag them below. And let's let's add our vertical sections to our closed curves. So it's repeating that series of operations for our verticals. So we now have a pretty cool looking waffle grid. And let's make this thickness thinner. This, this way we can get a more striated kind of bias to the horizontals. Starting to get some interesting articulation from different views. The preview's looking pretty good with this nice glossy effect also. So now that we've created our geometry, it's time to look at importing this geometry into the Revit project. 